We go on to our last speaker, a very different, interesting case. So experts, uh, please watch on. We need your thoughts. Our last speaker is Dr. Srinivas Rao, who's the regional head and clinic, clinical services Chennai of the Agarwal Group of Hospitals with his pearl. On to you, Srinivas. Thank you, madam. I'd like to share my screen. Is it visible? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, sure. Yes. I would like to thank uh, the expert stalwart panels and Chitra, madam, especially for giving me this chance. I would like to say Dr. Chitra Ramurthy and uh, Dr. Ramurthy as a ROP after postgraduate student, I joined them. They trained me as a consultant. I would like to thank them for uh, making me as like, a good consultant. Here, I'm going to show a case of an uh, anterior chamber lens. I'm going to show a case of an uh, anterior chamber lens lens where the pressure was high and the vision was poor. I'm going to show this is not for the beginners, but I will show various methods which can be used. While taking the scleral flaps, always mark and take unless uh, till you become expert because in my learning curve, I had a lot of difficulty where the lens looks uh, dislocated later, even in the crude oil method. Here the, I'm trying to move the intraocular lens, but I, as you see, the haptic is clearly stuck with the iris. I'm trying to remove it and uh, it's, it's not moving. And as I see, I created iroda dialysis while doing that. And uh, I would like to tell everybody, like in this all these situations, try to keep an endo illuminator for better visualization. All these difficult cases. Even in spite of trying this, I'm not able to move the haptic clearly. So then I decided that uh, the haptic is stuck, cannot be removed. So I cut the haptic at one end and uh, trying to remove the whole entry chamber intraocular lens through the main port. I bought, and you can see the both the haptics in both the ends are stuck there. And I have already created a aerodialysis at one end, and a continuous irrigation fluid there. And uh, we are doing an anterior vitrectomy, a triamcinolone acetate. Definitely, I advocate to be used while doing this and trying to rotate the haptic and taking out the haptic out. Even though I have damaged a part of the iris aerodialysis there, I cut the iris part and in that piece of the broken haptic is explanted out. Now on the other side also the haptic is stuck. I'm slowly trying to maneuver it, trying to remove that, which is stuck. Cut the additions with the micro scissors and bring it through the main port. Now you can see the vitreous is there. Now the pupil is very much constricted. So I'm using iris hook. I will advise everybody in case a small pupil the cost is very less when compared to other expanders. Use always the iris hook for to get a better uh, nexus and a better visualization. And always do a triamcinolone acetate uh, anterior vitrectomy. I have edited, I am not able to show that. And you can see the somering ring, which has been discovered in 1928 because of the uh, proliferation of the equatorial lens cells between the anterior and posterior lens cells, which produces the posterior opacification. Now I'm doing the glue dial technique. Here, first the haptic is externalized. Here I also had a lot of learning curve doing the glue dial. Both the haptic has to be externalized so that the lens is stable. Otherwise, sometimes the haptic falls down and difficult to catch it later. And creating the shariats packet also, always measure it and create that. Otherwise, later on when you do, you can have a tapius like a dislocated lens even if you're doing a glue dial. The shariats packet is created. Now the iris hook is inserted and uh, separated. And the sombering ring, which is lodged, is brought to the main port. And as you know, this sombering ring is essential. Removing is very essential because it will produce uh, continuous opacification, intraocular pressure, PAS, peripheral and anterior all these things it will produce. Remove that slowly, or you can use a vitrector if necessary. Gently remove that. All these situations, uh, you use, uh, we always use an endo eliminator. Again, vitrectomy is done to create to easy maneuver of the movement of our instruments. Now, and here while removing the sounding, remember, I kept the glue rail as a scaffold technique. Now, the gently, the iris hooks are removed one by one, and the anterior chamber is created. Now, you know, I have an aerodial dialysis to repair, as well as the pupil is distorted. So I'm using, a, as advised by Michael Schneider, with the iris hangback technique. This can be done only if there is 
less than three clock hours. And I'm going to use the pinhole pupillar plastic technique to repair the pupil. And uh, the iris hang back technique, if it is less than three clock hours, you can suture it, the straight noodle with the 10 zero propylene suture, so that uh, this uh, iris, if it is left like that, will cover the trabecular muscles by the peripheral iris and it produce a rise in intraocular pressure. So it has to be dealt and handled. As it is less than three clock hours, we are doing that, taking the noodle, spreading, taking the knot, burying it. As mentioned earlier by the speaker, this has to be done very gently so that the iris doesn't peak. And as advice, uh, Pilocar also can be tried and done, which I have not done, which oh. I learned it today. And uh, can here uh, always remember uh, when we're doing the pinhole pupillar plasty, as advised and published by Priya Narang in JCRS, we use the three point uh, disease microscope uh, image, Purkinje images. And to see to that, the pinhole pupillar plasty is center of it. So that the pinhole pupillar is what we create. Even though some of them don't uh, advocate, particularly retinal surgeons will be angry with us for creating a smaller pupil, but we have demonstrated a four millimeter pupil is sufficient to examine the things. In case you want to do a later retinotomy, we have retinal procedures we can do and expand the pupil by doing a, through the victata and do the procedure. As you see here, the Purkinje images, the pupil is not centered. So I have to again do a bit of iris through the vitrector and create a round pupil. And now the iris part is taken care, the lens part is taken care with the glue diode. I normally use the endoeliminator for all these difficult procedures. I don't advocate this for the regular cataract surgeons. Put an air bubble, close the wound with all the glue. I'd like to thank the organizers. I would like to share this video mainly for the three point. And I mainly showed this three point. There is one thing is in case there is a there is a if there is a pupil less than three clock hours, hydrodialysis there, use the iris handbag technique and repair it. And in case of a pupil is not centered, you can use the pinhole pupillar plastic to make it center, which will also correct the higher order abrasions and the irregular uh, corneal abrasions which is coming in. Gives a better vision. I'd like to thank everybody for this great opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Srinivas. Uh, I think uh, since ACIOs have become a, a not too common an uh, incident, these are some complications which come if the sizing of the uh, ACIO is not right. Must have been a large IO which has had uh, all those sinicase forming. Uh, uh, Partha, from your experience or uh, Dr. Minu Matan, do you think that uh, there is a role of ACIO still in our country? It's still being placed? Yes. So then uh, we need to discuss. Yes. Uh, ah, sorry, 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 sorry. I thought it was for so, me. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, for you, both of you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, so ACIOs are not to be blamed, just like that, because there is a meta-analysis. Dr. Chang mm -hmm. keeps saying that there are meta-analysis which show that secondary IOLs, when placed, ACIOs, when placed properly, sizing, mm -hmm. vitrectomy, pupil, yeah. uh, pupil properly uh, mm -hmm. centered. All those things dealt with, and secondary or planned procedure of an ACIO will give excellent results. We have to take care of the endothelium, look at the endothelium and all those things. But then that has equivalent results as other secondary IOL. So this is a shoving in an AC IOL without calculating the size, without properly dealing with vitreous and all will create all these things. I would like to just ask Dr. Srinivas, what was the cause of defective for poor vision in this? Muted, you are muted. There was a rise in intraocular pressure. The pupil was not centered and the sombering ring was producing a lot of visual disturbance. It was 660 vision was there. So we decided yeah, so, to go ahead with the So system. whenever I expand, I have expanded quite a few ACIOs. See, whenever you see, as he was showing, we, it, once you see that there are additions so much in the periphery, it is always better to excise the connection with the optic and the haptic. Otherwise, you cannot move it in different directions. Your direction, movement direction will be much limited. So we identify where it is more loose and move it in that direction, you know, in curved direction so that there is no direct pull on the root of the iris. That is one thing. And Sommer rings, rings has rightly said, if you try to take it out without a support or a, or a IOL scaffold there, most of it will drop. That's for sure. 
with fluid flowing behind it and if you do some vitrectomy and you try to aspirate it or pull it or pull on it some will come some will drop then it is a messy affair to go posteriorly and then uh, take it out and uh, pinhole pupilloplasty uh, i have been also doing and they are they are actually uh, i am not making them pinhole actually i i go maybe close to 3 3.5 mm i don't go beyond that because i have to face retina my retina colleagues tomorrow also so then they will they will not allow me to do all this so otherwise pinhole pupilloplasty is a great technique to do and uh, yes. that's it acivls i don't say no to it although may, there are the, the different opinions to that Martha, anything to add? Yes. Before we yes. Uh, ACIOLs, I would totally agree with uh, Minu. They still have a role to play, and uh, if the vitrectomy and uh, now the uh, the FAPO machines come with a good vitrectomy unit as well. So if a good vitrectomy is done and if it is placed well, it has a role to play, and people should go on if they are confident with it. Usually, a library of uh, ACIOLs used to be kept. now of course we don't keep it uh, at our place but uh, you know in settings where you don't have a first year segment backup yeah, surgeries are being done you need to appropriate the other thing segment. is um, uh, here uh, shrivasan uh, one thing that uh, you know uh, the amount of synechia that there was uh, with the pupil and to the posterior capsule or the remnants of the posterior capsule was quite a lot is it not so here uh, what i would uh, really feel is if uh, with the vitrector uh, with a low setting and if that could have been carved out so you would have got a, a roundish or uh, larger pupil and then of course your rings could have uh, the hooks could have come in and you could have exposed more and ultimately the pupillary size would be what you would have cut with the vitrector and uh, at times if it is good enough then you don't need to do a opening pupillary plastic So sir, I have a small question on ACIO, sir. Uh, does yeah. it the white to white measurement something like that we can do and plan in ACIO? Some no, of them. No, white to white. Uh, they used to say add one uh, millimeter, but I think it should be point five millimeter. A point five to one. See, according to the uh, according to the size, because see nowadays most of these ACIOs they come only in twelve point five. Maximum you can get is thirteen. So mm -hmm. you have to plan uh, which is which is available, and you have to get if it is twelve or more. you better go for a 13 mm if it is uh, if if you have more than 12 mm so many of the cases we are having more than 12 mm so 12.5 usually sometimes they are they are slightly smaller in some orientation if you are keeping it vertically then maybe or try to find out where it is more snugly fit sometimes in some clock overs they are little loose loose ones are not good they keep uh, having phagodonosis and you get endothelial decompensation and also the vertical I, diameter is smaller than the horizontal so we have to keep that in mind how you are positioning it so, so i just want to say much was said about acil and mm -hmm. uh, because we get a lot of cornea cases and yeah. in fact all yes. cases of corneal decompensation due to acil yes it, it, it sometimes look you know that it's kind of become a pandemic with acil pseudopathy and gonadotropathy and we have yeah. to either combine with dsec or pdec yes. or dmec yeah. whatever yes. it is to us and it's very difficult to do glue divers in those cases also because it's very hazy and you are trying to peer to a hazy cornea and trying to do that mm -hmm. so we always plan that as a first stage procedure and then as a second stage procedure we try to uh, do a endothelial keratoplasty so having said that of course acil is great but i think one needs to really look at pre operatively whether the iol is sitting in place or not and whether it is causing any phagodonosis or not because if there is a phagodonosis or if it is loose then it is going to uh, it is going to you know cause endothelial decompensation yeah. and in this case also if you have noticed it was very well very much stuck onto the iris that means it was a flipped aciol with an angulation facing posteriorly and pressing on to the uh, this one and also this pis sometimes these pis just close off peripheral vitreous and condensation fibrosis there. so i do routinely two pis if i have to place an aciol Two PIs and uh, vitrectomy around. Probably so this was an ACL put in AC. That is the main reason for this yeah. uh, lot of fibrosis. So PC I will in, in AC is an absolute. Yeah, a lot of people do that because they don't have the option available. So yeah. and they only want to go ahead with having an I will inside the eye. Yeah. And so many times they put I, the same I will in the antechamber. Must have explanted hundreds yeah. and hundreds of such I exactly. will. so i think it has been a very exhausting exhaustive day and an exhausting uh, sunday afternoon and i'm so thankful to my expert panel for really contributing pearls 
and making each of the speakers' topics uh, uh, outshine the other more because of the amount of learning which accrued from it all. And I'm th really thankful to my co-moderator, Harshul, for being with me. And of course, my IRC, who are my backbone. My thanks are due to our AOS admin, uh, Mr. Kripal and his team, who are always working hard in the background to keep us all going strong. And my thanks to the Numerotech, Sai, and Manjula for always being what they have been for ARC. Our thanks are also due to our uh, uh, webinar admin, Mr. Anand Sethi and his team. And you all have, must have seen how resilient uh, and cooperative they are throughout the procedure. My sincere thanks to Entoad for sponsoring every single webinar of us. And of course, Sun Pharma has joined in now. And finally, finally, my thanks to the dear attendees. It is your watching these webinars, which always has encouraged us to come back to you with more and more of teaching and probably more learning in this process. Thank you very much. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chitra. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Thank Thank you. you.